Hello Cozy Gamers and welcome to the Cozy Gaming Club where we cover all the latest Cozy Game releases. Today we're playing Lakeburg Legacies which is one of our highest anticipated releases of the year. We already did a regular playthrough when the demo came out so we thought we'd do something a little bit more interesting. We're really going to test how much matchmaking matters in this game by having a good ruler and a bad ruler. I'm Queen Charlotte from Bidgerton, our good ruler. I only care about happy couples, excellent relationships and above, please. If there's cheating or breakups, then I fail and I can't use my hearts for anything but rerolls. And I'm the bad ruler, though I prefer the term industry focused. My villagers will be marrying for profession over love, and their affinity for the job must be three stars and above. I will always act on a passion, or a crush my villagers show, happy marriages be damned, and I can't move citizens from job to job unless they are more suited for their new role. For example, moving a villager from a three-star job into a four-star job. At the start of every Lakeburg Legacies game, you'll have a Lumberjacks Lodge and a Lumberjack, and it's your job to find more villagers. We jumped in, started making wood, and found some good marriage material. So we're off to a good start. We've both matched our first couple with good success. I found a lumberjack and an excellent match. I didn't expect it to go this well this soon, but I'm sure we won't have any more uh, perfect matches or excellent matches. And I settled for a seamstress with an excellent match. I placed her in the farm and although her production was pretty terrible, at least we were getting food. And it's an excellent match. And we're going to say, I do. I, on the other hand, decided to forego my good farmer in favor of his aspiration and let what would probably be my only happy couple work together in the Lumberjacks Lodge, producing all the wood a couple could need, if you catch my drift. But that meant that they had to wait around 70 days until we could start producing food. No biggie. After getting my happy couple jobs, it only took a few months before I got my next villager. I grabbed a good old rounder for the early game and, unlike Callie, I could switch out my workers with no problem. Goodbye one star farmer and hello two and a half stars. Although we'll probably move him again later, but for now, more food. With my farm finally on the way now too, I could get my next villager, place him in the farm and run off to the matchmaker. Now this is where the rules started kicking in big time. After your stroke of luck with your first match. Ooh, a farmer. Okay. We can do this. Knight, guard. Three and a half farmer too. Okay. Uh, they don't have anything in common, but that's okay. Uh, she likes feasting, flowers, and reading. And she hates cuddles, treats, and poetry. Sounds like a lovely person. This time, we only managed to grab an average match. Not too bad, we aced the date and got married. And hoped their average love wouldn't affect their production too much. I, on the other hand, had a pretty chill time finding my excellent and perfect matches. I was even able to spare some hearts for re-rolls to look for the jobs I wanted too. You should always weigh your options when you're deciding who to marry after all. Yeah, I like to think that my villagers thanked me for it. They were able to marry for love and profit. That's the dream. <laughs> Minor painter hunter. Perfect. I knew it was all going to pay off. So we're going to marry Hubert and Wolfram. And so we continued building our little kingdom. We both made all the same buildings, of course. The village requires certain materials to make it, though. Wood, vegetables, leather, clothing. And with more buildings, we have more villagers. We have so many villagers looking for love. But we just keep finding good neighbours. And that's where my rule set started to become a little tricky. And where I started to have a lot of fun. One of my rules was my villagers were not allowed to have affairs or break up. This seems easy on the surface, but crushes are really common and outside of my control. Sometimes events would automatically force affairs for plot purposes. Like the tavern one. I got that one a lot. Obviously I always acted on it. Yeah, and just when they randomly meet and develop feelings. Hubert and Boris have a crush on each other. Hubert, you are getting around, mate. <laughs> but there's way more you can get. 
One of my villagers, Viola, was in a happy marriage herself and still started sneaking around with Raymona. Raymonda was walking hand in hand with Martha. Raymonda is her official partner when they came across Viola, whom Raymonda always felt attracted to, which was undoubtedly mutual. Viola didn't seem too happy to see the two lovebirds together, though. Do we ignore her? Raymonda and Viola evolved the crush. From crush to disliked. And the Raymonda's embarrassed. Raymonda and Viola are getting married. No, we don't want to do that. No, okay, we're going to ignore them. Oh, that is heated. Being ignored offended Viola. She started shouting in the street. So you've forgotten all about our knowing smiles, our sidelong glances in that evening when you almost kissed me. And now you're with that cow, you act like I don't exist. Martha was about to reply harshly, and Raymonda wished she could vanish into the air. They almost got married, and Viola was not happy when I put an end to it. This was really early on, too. The game would have been over before it had even begun. Viola sounds like a real troublemaker. She'd have been better in my village. Now that I think about it, though, my Viola was actually pretty excitable, too. Oh my gosh. Viola is, like, just everyone. Heart with Victoria, heart with Hildebert, uh, infatuated with Flory, and first kiss with Robert. Oh my gosh. She just loves this village. Watch out for Violas, apparently. But she really scared me for a moment. And then later she had the audacity to worry about her husband cheating. Oh. Viola found some hair on Sigisbert's clothes and it's clearly not his. What could Sigisbert's Jay to judge? Justify his absence last night. Admit about having an affair or lie shamelessly. Do we want to admit or lie? But we don't know what... This could end it. Admit? Oh, let's go with admit. Biggest bit, but he likes a mal more. I mean, we have to choose Viola, unfortunately. That wasn't even the last we see of her either. But these events were totally unavoidable. And you weren't sure whether they counted as a rule break? Yeah, I decided they didn't because they were only crushes and we didn't act on them. Yeah, there are three stages to adultery. In the game, I mean. And it can change depending on whether the second person is married or not. There's crush, first kiss, and romantic partner. Or there's also a secret version of these. And that has the snake symbol. So, I think they may be a little bit more detrimental to the marriages. So my villagers had a few harmless crushes, but no full-blown adulterous relationships. Yeah, that doesn't count. My villagers, on the other hand, were shacking up with everyone. It was amazing. At some points I thought they'd just end up combining their families together. People were in romantic relationships with a person while also crushing on that person's spouse or husband. It was honestly like a soap opera. Wow, that sounds way more hectic than mine. Yeah, for sure. You had to act on every crush too, right? By using your hearts for the greet option. I did! And that was fun. I got to decide whether they could take the crush further. And my village might as well have just been a polyamorous commune. Though, I don't think any of the affairs actually ended up ending any relationships, so maybe it was. Really? That's strange. Surely there should be more of that. Yeah, I would have liked to see more of that, actually. It would add another dimension to the relationship mechanic. My excellent loved up couple were having an affairs too, uh, but nothing really impacted their love. Did their relationships not change at all? Well, I think they might have stepped down from madly in love with a huge desire for a baby to just in love, but that also probably could have been down to age. Actually, now that I think about it, I definitely had more dead bedrooms than ever before. Oh, what's happened here? Bad affinity. Baby wish none. Mine actually were all amazing relationships, even with the occasional crushes. And spoilers, but I ended up with a lot of golden hearts. I had maybe one at the end, so you can see where my priorities were. I also had a lot of breakups. But you were allowed those. Yeah, of course. There was one specific prompt that kept coming up, the baby one. Ooh, being a young parent is a full-time job. Sigrid and Frigg know this well. Spending their days and nights cleaning up smelly substances and listening to the sound of crying, their nerves might not hold up much longer if they don't catch a break. A little help would certainly be appreciated. Uh, 
some parental leave. Uh, ooh, minus coins. I don't think so. Uh, uh, that is their problem. I think so. So they're just gonna have to get the exhaustive trait. I need my money. What can I say? Did you ever get that one? No. I wonder if it's because a lot of my couples were either average or in some cases just really bad. So in those cases, raising a baby would be really hard work. But anyway, I always picked the production or money related option. I didn't let them rest. But they're making you more workers. Yeah, well, I get those whether they stay together or leave each other. And I think after that prompt, they always left one another, so. Every time? Did that have negative outcomes? Well, I had to build more houses, but honestly, I was producing way too much wood anyway, so it was actually beneficial. Uh, but also, weirdly enough, I was sometimes hoping for my couples to break up. Why would you want that? It was really beneficial to my goals. I get to marry more people instead of buying them in the little neighborhood section. Honestly, that section was just useless for me in the late game. No way! I found the neighbor section really useful. Towards the end, when I had a lot of money, I actually bought a lot of neighbors rather than trying to find matches because they just kept giving me the jobs I wanted. Recruitment. Farmer. That's a very good farmer. I think that's in fact better than both the farmers we have now. So let's bring Marion into our town. We have so many villagers looking for love, but we just keep finding good neighbors. Oh, that's a big difference, but I really needed specific jobs. I would look for one or two jobs every time and it almost never had the ones I needed, but I could browse the matchmaking section forever, and trust me, sometimes it was forever. Was it that hard to find a job you needed? Not super hard most of the time, but man, I felt the pain of it in the late game. I was looking for some jobs forever, like a miner, a blacksmith, a fisherman. Those took me so long. Fisherman, finally! Okay. Oh, that's so strange. I didn't have too much of a problem. Sometimes I had to wait a couple of months for the next neighbors to show up, but I had so much money too that I could just buy whoever I wanted. I have no idea how you got so much money. I had a good amount of money in this playthrough. I never had to wait too long to upgrade my buildings or my storage, but it sounds like you had even more money again. Yeah, I had a lot. So after you hit a certain amount of villagers, maybe like 15, you unlock the dreaded rodent's nest. Lakeburg has a few challenges like this, and they can be really detrimental if you don't deal with them quickly. And you had it easy, but I had to find a rat catcher really fast. Rats are never easy, but I could just put anyone in there, yeah. Finding that rat catcher wasn't super hard, thankfully, but man, I was scared. If I didn't find one, then my villagers were gonna slowly die off. Yeah, it can get really bloody if you let it go on too long. Thankfully, that didn't happen. We managed to stay in the first bar and no one even got a cold. Perfect. But what did give me some trouble was the pleasure house. <gasps> pleasure house? Oh my gosh. Where did that come from? Oh, the pleasure house. Two of my lumberjacks were actually perfect to be employed there. So I just went to fetch Viola, who'd previously tried to break up our beloved Ramona and Martha, and it all worked out fine. Oh my god, that's perfect. But see, I couldn't steal anyone from my buildings because of the rule set. And also because I wasn't quite sure what the job title for the pleasure house was. I'd seen lady or man of the evening before, but it never even occurred to me that was what that was for. Really? Have you not experienced the pleasure house before? Only in my dreams. But no. This was my first time, so I went looking for someone to fill the boots, but I couldn't do it immediately because I didn't have any space. So in a way, the pleasure house actually helped me get a worker for its own building. Because it started making your hearts go down. Yeah, obviously I had pretty terrible relationships anyway. A few surprisingly good ones, but a lot that weren't very good. So I had quite a few breakups all at once. But then you found your lady of the evening. Yes, man of the evening actually. Let's try and find him. Man of the evening? That seems right to me. That seems okay. I think that's fine. It was his aspiration and everything. I figured the fluffy pillows in the occupation section were a good hint that he was the man I was looking for. And then it was mostly smooth sailing to the crown. Yeah, the pleasure house came at the beginning of the same year I built my castle. And we're gonna find our queen a house. 
We're still paused on 15 years. We have had no breakups. We're just gonna find a soulmate for our queen. Do they need to be interested in weaning too? Is that possible? I can't say I had the same luck there. I had the forge ready to produce the weapons for the castle, but it took me almost three years to find a blacksmith for it. Three years! With all the hammering my villagers were doing, how were none of them already qualified? I had a pitiful amount of breakups, and the neighbor tab really hated me. It was a long stretch. No way, that's so long. Yeah, when you have to employ trained workers, it's sometimes a little rough to get them in. But finally, in August of year 17, blacksmith, finally, finally found a blacksmith and they started making the weapons I needed for the castle. I built my castle in October of year 15, but I actually had a little bit of trouble crowning a queen. I put her in the seat and everything, but the game had other plans and didn't actually crown her. Oh no, how come? I think it was just a bug. I restarted the save and there she was, sitting pretty in the throne room with her wife, Queen Eleanor. Or Queen Ellie, if you prefer. And there we go, we have a queen! Did you plan that? <laughs> no, of course not! I didn't see any Callies in my playthrough, so I had to settle for someone else. Queen Margaret, crowned in November of year 19. We are gathered here on this historic day to crown our new loser of Race to the Crown, Queen Margaret. Apparently, love triumphs after all. Turns out a village who only sleeps together doesn't necessarily work together. It was a well-fought battle, but Queen Eleanor, unintentional, reigns supreme. Although, I did have a potential rule break of my own while crowning the queen. What did you do? Well, the queen needs a consort, and I failed to take into account the job desires of her partner. I just kind of threw her into the queen spot without thinking of them poor Frigg was plucked from her job as a huntress to sit on the throne next to her wife. But sacrifices have to be made for money, I suppose. That's good to know though. I actually went and found an excellent match for her that also wanted to be a queen, so it worked out really well. You had way more foresight than I did. I was just happy to be queen. It's easy to forget that the queen's consort probably isn't going to keep producing leather from her new castle home though, in my defense. What was your first decree as queen? I immediately upped the taxes for everyone. That's the first thing I did too. Though maybe not as harsh as you did. <laughs> I'm honestly really surprised with how this went for both of us. I thought the bad rule, sorry, industry-focused ruler would win this one. I could only choose excellent or perfect relationships, which is a pretty tough constraint when you need productive villagers. I was lucky that I could skip some and find jobs we needed, but it was usually a much lower level than I'd have otherwise picked. Yeah, as I discovered, production is pretty important. Exactly! To counteract this, I just prioritized boosting production of each building, which must have really helped. I'm surprised you were so confident that a bad ruler would win, because I knew for sure that love would conquer all. How cheesy. But this is a dating city builder after all. I'm really quite surprised at just how well I did without having excellent or even great matches. I guess I was lucky I didn't have too many bad relationships, but I'm still really shocked. I guess it shows you can play the game however you like and still get somewhere. Absolutely, though I think it's clear that a focus on production and love gets the best results. The challenge overall though was a lot of fun, and I really can't wait to play more. Challenge or no? Yeah, I love this game. I didn't find the restrictions as difficult as I thought they'd be. My citizens were just so loved up, I had enough hearts to counteract all the times I swiped left. Although I did have a couple of dry spells and had to wait to make a few new matches. We have so much love to go around. I don't know if we can <laughs> get another excellent in the hearts we have left so we might just have to go to builder because we're going to unlock the building thing soon i'm sure yeah i didn't struggle but there were times that it felt a little dicey it's not often you find yourself wishing for an affair or a breakup but this was one of those times i think a real challenge would be if you can only pick the first that meets your criteria although then the cruel ruler would definitely win i think yeah that's basically what i did anyway so you're probably right so, given that there wasn't much in it, that suggests the rules we have decided were fair. It was a tough fight, but you deserve the victory. I'll take my crown now. You'll have to reload. <laughs>
Thank you for watching this challenge. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, then please like, comment, and subscribe, and let us know. And if you're looking for a cozy community to join, then check out our Discord. Link will be in the description. Bye.